You know, for my dual bandsaw, I've been thinking for a while that I could really do with a nice mitre fence. The table is fitted with this one inch diameter guide rod, which is what the original mitre fence was guided on. So I searched the internet for all of the photos I could find on the original mitre fence from Dual, and then I started designing in CAD, like trying to draw up basically the same thing. Figuring that I'd probably 3D print it, maybe make a casting from it, make my own version of Dual's mitre fence. But you know what happened? I plugged mitre fence into the local classified ads, and this came up for only 90 bucks. It's an original Festool mitre fence. Probably came from one of their table saws or something. Now while it might be a little bit big for the dual, it's going to work. And the cool thing is it's got this like indent system. You know, so you can basically just indent it to all of the major normal angles. And it seems quite well made with quite a nice rigid construction. The actual fence itself is a bit too long, but I'll just cut that down shorter. It's easily adjusted. Now this guide foot isn't going to work, at least not without some modification. The horizontal adjustment is done with this pretty meaty extrusion, and that just slots into this uh, clamping foot normally. By the way, speaking of dovetails, have you ever wondered how Jet Airline fan blades are mounted? Well, they're also done with dovetails. How are they manufactured? Generally fan discs are titanium forgings. I'm pretty sure they wire EDM the dovetail slots in, but they may also be some form of a shaping. This clamping jaw is, is a flexure off the bottom. That's kind of nice. Okay, well I've had this now for a couple of months, since summer really, it's now spring. The whole time I was kind of focused on how I could adapt this to make up some sort of one of these to clamp onto this beam that's already here. Because this is a really nicely engineered part, maybe it's easier just to replace the beam. So what does this need to look like? I guess it needs to stick out about two centimeters. The throat's going to need to be probably about 12 millimeters thick. And what's the distance down from the top of the table? 28.4 millimeters. Now while I would guess that those guiding surfaces are 45 degrees, let's just check that too. Probably a slight measurement error there, we'll call that 45 degrees. So what's that truncated to? I would call that 8 millimeters. Well, after a rather rough and messy sketch, looking at the profile I need, I was sort of looking at using an adapter plate to mount it, but unfortunately the existing holes are pretty big, they're imperial, and they really, that you'd still have to have a hole through the whole profile to be able to screw them on or unscrew them. So I got thinking maybe the easiest is just drill a couple of extra holes on the table and then I can just bolt straight through my new profile and I don't need an adapter plate. Now the second thing I kind of picked up in this design process is that this is really just a static clamp. It's not really designed for guiding. I guess on the original Fest tools, this clamps onto a whole sliding mechanism. Maybe it'll sort of work for me if I don't tighten it up too tight and just slide it. But really, where it would really shine would be as a ripping fence. If I bolt a strip of this profile along this edge, I can really easily just mount this at 90 degrees and set up whatever ripping distance I want super easily. So I'll make up a short length of that profile. I'll make it overhang a little bit out the back so that I can run this kind of all the way out to the edge there and still clamp it. I'll just drill two extra holes here into the end to mount it. Now while I don't have rectangular or square stock that would fit, I've got this bar of one inch stainless steel, so I guess I'll use that. So I need a tenth of a millimetre more than that current gap. So I'll measure the gap, make up a Joe Box stack, and use 
use that. I don't think that bar is perfectly straight. That's good enough to get the first side cut in. Well there's the first stop done, next I need to just flip it over and do the other side. Next up I need to drill and counterbore the two mounting holes. The mounting holes finished, setup two is done. Setup three is going to be just flattening the bottom. Next up, the fourth operation is the upper surface with the V-groove machined into it. Okay, glad I picked that up. Because my part zero was on the top of the bar last time, but I took 3.6 millimeters off the bar, my part zero is now dropped. So I just need to uh, touch this back off. I also put in fresh inserts for this last bit. Damn, I should have changed to those inserts much sooner. They make a much nicer surface finish. Got a little bit of chatter through the unsupported area in the middle. I guess I probably should have put my vices a little closer together. You know, I never actually modelled those holes in my in CAD, so I'm a bit annoyed that I've now broken through there. I won't change the function, but it just looks bad. Oh yeah, this is going to work great.
I must say I'm pretty happy with the finish I got out of this homemade chamfer tool. I'll leave a link up here on the right to grinding it. Damn, that's a blunt blade. So which camp are you in? Are you more into, under no circumstances would I ever drill extra holes in a machine tool table or base? Or are you like me and it's like, I'd rather not, but if the circumstances require, I will do it. Wait a minute. Why am I lifting like that? Okay, this is pretty frustrating. When I clamp this up tight, so that that's nice and vertical, this tilts backwards. I can't see anything obvious. It's not a huge amount. I can force it down into position, but it is a bit frustrating. Now I realize that I'm covering up the slot to remove the blade. But I did this on purpose because this way I can run this right up to take a super thin cut and also go out right to the edge of the table. Right, let's set this up to rip 10 millimeters. Wait, that board's not flat at all. So I've just roughly jointed most of this board. I didn't get it cleaned up completely. So let's try ripping that to 10 millimeters. Okay, I was a bit under. I'm gonna to need to work on how to set it up accurately, like how many millimeters to leave for cleaning up afterwards. But it sure is nice to have a fence set up that's easy to adjust, easy to remove. Cool. Since there's nothing more relaxing than watching somebody else work, I'll leave you with a little time lapse of cleaning up the maho. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. One thing I hate about stainless is that the swarfs like bloody needles. I was gonna install a miter fence, but it turns out now I'm misusing that nice miter fence as just a ripping fence. But that's okay, no harm done. I still need to come up with a solution to use it as a miter fence. But until then, since there's nothing more relaxing than watching somebody else work, I'll leave you with a little time lapse of cleaning up the maho. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.